Dharamshala. It means place of peace or sanctuary. Nestled under the Himalaya in North India, it looks peaceful enough. But to Tibetans in exile, it's a town of mourning, of frustration, activism and politics. McLeod Gunj, India, is the capital of their uncertain world. Local man about town, Lobsang Wangil, lives to keep images of Tibetans in the worldwide media. I'm a uh, photojournalist, freelance, and uh, since recently I have uh, given myself a new title as well, a secondary title, a small town impresario. <laughs> Every year, he sets the town talking with his own provocative challenge to Tibetan traditions. There wasn't much Tibetan woman's creativity or woman's participation in terms of, you know, show and entertainment. So, Miss Tibet popped up. I devised, devised the page in such a way that it has all the in Hindi word, we call it masalas, you know, the ingredients of, you know, all kinds of spices. There is politics, there is social, there is fun, entertainment, education, culture, everything. Explicitly, it is about empowering Tibetan women, young Tibetan women. Implicitly, it asserts Tibet as a nation and Tibetans as a people. A very important message is there. And young Tibetan women are hearing Lobsang's call. In Australia, graduate nurse Dolma Drymedsang sharpens her moves. I'm going to do Miss Tibet and hopefully I win. <laughs> Dolma arrived in Australia six years ago as a refugee and established her new life in Melbourne. I escaped from Tibet with my sister when I was uh, eight years old. Living in this country is a strength for me because I never felt when I was back in India, I thought I won't be able to help anyone, just myself maybe to feed my stomach and I, don't, I never thought that I would be able to achieve something in life. But now it's changed. I feel like all the doors are open for me, you know, if I wanted to, everything is Possible. Everything's possible. Dolma, chin up. Chin up, shoulders back. Relax. Dolma's team has a secret weapon for the catwalk. In the, in the pageant. The most yep. sort of, um, I guess, evocative symbol that mm -hmm. we thought of was the Tibetan flag. Dolma is the first Australian ever to enter the Miss Tibet pageant. I'm doing Miss Tibet because it will give me a platform to talk about Tibet's issue. Her expectations high after months of preparation, now Dolma is ready for India. This is my beautiful dress that I'm going to wear for my evening gown. Thank you to all the girls. This dress is for all of you. After a 12-hour journey from the mountains in a bumpy, crowded bus, Lobsang's in Delhi to organise his outfit at the biggest fabric shop in town. My suit has become a, an important part of uh, the whole Mr. Bad pageant. Everybody's asking Lobsang, what, which colour are you wearing? So uh, this is a difficult uh, thing to do, you know, like the Mr. Bad pageant yourself. Lobsang's Miss Tibet suit is his signature. Yeah, this is it. With some lights and all this, this is perfect. Arriving in New Delhi's 42 degree heat, Dolma too needs to go shopping for cooler cottons. How's this? Just like a cotton. Oh, look. 
and then reconnects with old schoolmates who are in their 23rd day of a hunger strike, protesting another Chinese crackdown in Tibet after shocking self-immolations by monks and nuns fighting Chinese authority. I'm going to show all my support today for them. They're doing a great job and I'm so happy for what they're doing and I'm always after there to support them. To be Tibetan is to be an activist. With a few days to go before she's due in Dharamshala for the pageant, Dolma visits Tibetan settlements where she grew up, meets a sister-in-law she's never met before, and prays with her at the nunnery for the removal of all obstacles on her path to win Miss Tibet. I feel there will be no problem on my way to back to Dharamsala and to the pageant. So I think I'm safe. I feel safe. Up in the cool of McLeod Gunge, the clouds evaporate when the Miss Tibet contestants first show themselves in the town. I just love McLeod Gunge. It's such a spiritual place. The weather is perfect and everybody's just beautiful here. Relaxed and nice and talking, friendly here. I just love McLeod. The pageant takes over a local hotel. Two to a room, the contestants have just seven short days to rehearse and prepare everything for the three-day spectacle. From their first official outing, the girls learn that in downtown McLeod Gunge, it's hard to be elegant all the time. There are six contestants, three from India and one each from Australia, Switzerland and the USA. <laughs> With the Himalayas towering behind, Lobsang's press conference launches the girls directly at the media lens. I'm very happy and honoured to announce the 10th anniversary of the Miss Tibet pageant. And like bees to honey, the journalists love the assignment, knowing the front page potential. Tenzin Kecho from Minneapolis has catwalk experience. She holds the crown for Miss Tibet North America. Because um, I'm representing all the Tibetan women from the North America. Who have... Business graduate Tenzin Sangmo, a popular local entrant, is tall with a model's good looks. At 17, Tenzin Yankee from Switzerland is the least experienced. Hi everyone, I'm the youngest here of the five girls. My name is Tenzin Yankee, I'm 17 years old. I think all girls look very intelligent and beautiful and have to take it really serious, so I hopefully I'll do it. <laughs> Surrounded by beautiful young women, Lobsang is right in his element. A Tibetan Hugh Hefner with a political message and the showmanship to pull it off. Miss Tibet Pageant is, has elements of both dividing and uniting factors. Like His Holiness the Dalai Lama, he said, if there is Miss Tibet, there should be Mr. Tibet as well. Otherwise, there is inequality. This is his view. His, view, his views about a uh, beauty pageant is physical appearance, physical beauty is important, but inner beauty is more important. Perfect, you know, ideal, you know. No, 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 now we'll not do that. Now we will stick to that. Lobsang is proud of the ideals of his pageant, particularly his choice of judges. Judges, all non Tibetans, so that there are no controversies after non Tibetans. Uh, mostly Indians and uh, uh, Westerners. Exhale, fold forward, grab the ankles if you're tight, otherwise grab the toes, grab the Every morning the pressure is on to be on time to look good. The perfect Miss Tibet will be like the deity Tara. Tara is, in Buddhism, the most perfect woman. I'm on my next little <laughs> 
there's no time to rest before the next photo call for Lobsang's website. Oh, very good. Very nice. Number one is like the physical attraction because that's like really the first sight like that. Yep, that's beautiful. Hold that. Yeah, no, yeah. Secondly, I, I want her to be like, you know, warm heartedness. The way Dalai Lama put it, yeah? Warm heartedness, warmth, kindness. That's very important. That's the essence. And then to be able to like, you know, speak about the Tibetan issue, the Tibetan like problems, whatever. You know? And particularly about Tibetan women. There are daily lessons in Tibetan issues. All the teachers are men. So she must, you know, like embody all these different uh, important qualities. Halfway through their training week, the contestants are exhausted. I'm going to be sick tomorrow. I don't want to go to yoga. I'm already tired from here. You have to go to yoga tomorrow again. Don't, I don't tell think me. it's possible. <laughs> Yeah, when nice. there's a competition, we are, uh, I mean, girls are like a cat fight, right? But we are not like that. <laughs> the contestants want to meet Tibetan women. So Lobsang squeezes in a visit to 83-year-old living legend Ama Ade, a saintly survivor of 28 years in a Chinese jail. <laughs> With Lobsang's chaotic schedule, it's almost impossible to find a little time for the essential girls' trip to the beauty parlor. I've never done my vaccine for this. The private things. <laughs> Dolma lets no obstacle get in her way. Oh my god! It's not oh, bad. I'm scared. Actually. I was so scared and embarrassed. I don't but want to do it. Okay. Yeah. Audition, you know, makes it right? While Lobsang mans the phones, Dolma organizes a private rehearsal away from the hotel. She needs practice with a microphone to get her confidence back. If she can beat a lingering throat infection, her singing voice may give her the winning edge in the talent round. Shit. You know what I think? Two what? days left and I have to sing in front of 5,000 people and my voice is singing. Yet Miss Tibet is not the most important show in town. The Dalai Lama has decided to step down as political leader, but remain as spiritual leader. This transition is a, a huge transition. A transition from a, one political leadership to a newly elected political leadership, and from one generation to a, another generation. The incoming Prime Minister, Dr. Lobsang Sange, takes a very politic middle path on the beauty pageant. As for Mr. Bet, Lobsang Wangil asked me to be one of the advisory board members, and I refused. Not that I'm against Ms. Tibet, but uh, I feel very uncomfortable uh, seeing Tibetan women in uh, swimsuit. What do you reckon? One piece is better? But not everyone agrees with the new Prime Minister. The organizer is saying if you wear one piece, it shows you're unconfident. He told everyone, so all the girls decided to wear two pieces now. Can you show me some cheeky? Start like that, and half turn, and standing here, half turn. A late change of venue for the swimsuit round sees Lobsang's loyal stage crew have to improvise Tibetan style. 
Andy chooses an open bush setting at a nearby mountain stream. Everything like sort of under control. There were some like, you know, uh, how do you say, hiccups, you know, but uh, I think now it's getting under control, so it's all good. And the strictly non-Tibetan judges have prior experience. Well, I'm very good at judging dog shows, being a vet. So there's similar categories, actually. Figure, posture, poise, very similar to dog show judging. I'm married to a Tibetan, so I'm in and out with them, and I know them pretty well. So I'm, I'm the best judge, for the Tibetans at least. In the makeup tent, there's no turning back. It's almost time. The first contestant of the swimsuit round of Miss Tibet 2011, Miss Chime Panzon. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss And wearing a bikini doesn't come any harder than this. Across stony ground in very high heels, in time to loud, distorted music. And when it's Dolma's turn to run the gauntlet, she needs all her skill not to stumble. Dolma's main rival, Miss Tibet USA, 19-year-old Tenzin Kecho, steps out with the ease of a professional model. And the last, Young Tenzin Yankee from Switzerland finds her rhythm only at the last minute. Lobsang's loyal press corps get their unlikely shots. Tibet, packaged in bikinis. I love living in India. Where else does this sort of thing happen and you get to suddenly become the judge of a Miss Tibet swimsuit pageant? <laughs> it's great. As the sunset shines on the snow above, today's glamour is over. Dolma still has two days of stiff competition ahead of her. The new morning brings Miss Tibet to the front pages again. Lobsang's media equation worked perfectly. Pretty girls in small bikinis mean big exposure in the newspapers. I've got the highest mark for the swim round. I'm feeling very confident for the rest of the evening tonight. We have a talent round, uh, talk rounds. All I have to do is show my talents and the talk round, which I think I'm kind of ready. <laughs> but despite her optimism, Dolma still struggles with her sore throat. While the theatre fills to capacity, backstage, getting ready, it's a family affair. The contestants all fear the talk round. At only an hour's notice, they have to speak in English to a Tibetan topic drawn from Lobsang's ballot. Here are the questions for the six girls. Dolma's subject is highly charged. Oh, yeah. news of tension and crackdowns. What exactly is Hello? happening and where is this taking place? Oh, yeah. She must talk about the recent self-immolations by monks and nuns inside Tibet. Although she starts confidently, Dolma falters but recovers well. So due to the distrust, they, they took him to the monastery. So the Chinese um, directors recognize the struggle. Tenzin Kecho has all the breeze of a young American. His, uh, former president of the United States, President Bush, also awarded him. Shy Tenzin Yankee keeps her talk very short, but scores a direct hit with her last line. before it gets too late. And don't forget to use condoms. In the light-hearted talent round, all the contestants have a shot at Bollywood dance. Only Dolma uses her maximum stage time to show off her vocal skills. Her Tibetan opera is an instant hit. And her voice holds up for the difficult freedom song. As the evening closes,
closes in on finale night, 2,000 people crowd eagerly around the catwalk at the Tibetan Institute of Performing Arts. And we're coming up with our questions for today. Yeah, we're about to draft our questions as well. Collaborate so we don't ask the same thing. Backstage, it's frantic. What do you think? Black is better or without black? Ready? T-shirt and jeans. And then, it's showtime. So ladies and gentlemen, the man behind this show, Mr. Alosa Wanke. It's Lobsang's Night of Nights, and time for him to shake that silver suit. The contestants are straight back in the spotlights for the introduction round. My name is Tenzin Sammo. I was born and grown up here in Meklodganj, Dharamsala. This past week in Dharamsala, I have had so much many opportunities. I met with ex-political prisoner, Amma Adi. I for me, Miss Tibet is not just a beauty pageant, but it is a political act. Because Miss Tibet celebrates our identity, our culture, and our proud tradition. It's a country town variety show with Tibetan guest artists, a local Indian dance troupe, and Lobsang's fireworks. Backstage, Dolma steps up for the next Dolma. round. It's time to launch her secret weapon. In her interview round, Dolma takes a very difficult question. Buddhism and the Dalai Lama teach about selflessness and trying to get rid of the ego. And yet this is a beauty pageant. How are you reconciling that as a representative of Tibetan Buddhism? And acquits herself well in response. Um, I totally agree with you that inner beauty is more important than the outer beauty because outer beauty lasts just temporarily you're beautiful but if you're beautiful inside you're beautiful forever and, and while Lobsang tallies up backstage in the crowd the tension builds I would like to announce the winner of the Miss Tibet pageant 2011 is and the winner is Ms. Tenzin Yankee. Tenzin Yankee's win is a shock result, and no one is more surprised than the young Swiss Tibetan herself. Dolma from Melbourne is declared runner up. And Lobsang struts the silver suit once more. In the dressing room, Tenzin Yankee's family gets ready to party. Party all night. Without alcohol. And the other contestants each try to come to terms with the surprise results. I was expecting Kiju to win, but finally Yankee win, and I don't think it's too. I don't think Yankee should win. I think Kecho should win because she deserves that. Tenzin Kecho is philosophical. At least one of us won, and um, I guess I just have to wait for another chance at my opportunity. While Dolma is strangely quiet. The following morning, there's still such dismay about the results that the girls meet. I think that someone gets cheated, he's a fraud. We want to know the truth. We want to know what, how did the process go. In solidarity, the girls decide to confront Lobsang. I decide to 
decided to come to this pageant because I saw you as a good idol Tibetan men who want to promote Tibetan, you empower Tibetan women. When Dolma calmly asks to see the marking sheets, Lobsang conveniently claims to have lost them. <laughs> Uncomfortable with such a challenge from feisty, assertive women, Lobsang asks them to leave. Get lost. Dolma firmly stands her ground, determined to get a truthful answer about the marking. Under pressure, Lobsang finally discloses his secret assessment system. He reveals that the non-Tibetan judges are in control of only 25% of the evaluation. The other 75% of the assessment process is totally in Lobsang's hands. So much for his non-Tibetan judges. Dolma loses her cool. She feels strongly that Lobsang has manipulated the results. Good, great. Please don't forget your bags. But you are a fort. Yeah, yeah, I am. Please. Miss Tibet should be someone who should be calm and, you know, listen and be respectful and see if this is how Miss Tibet will be. Oh my God. No way. When I look back into Miss Tibet, what I've come to realize is that Love Someone Gets Miss Tibet does not empower Tibetan women, but it does the opposite. It actually disempowers Tibetan women. So I believe the only way it could have any values is if it were run by a woman. And that doesn't look likely to happen anytime soon. This is my baby, 10 years old. <laughs>